So in this video, we're gonna show you how to build one of the best home automation platforms to host all things home automation and media serving. And well, first thing you need is a Raspberry. Nope. No, we're not using any type of small little microcomputer because it just won't get the job done. So I get this question asked all the time. What do you use? What do you use to host all your media streaming, backups, and local storage of whether it be pictures, videos, and well, these YouTube videos, and Home Assistant, and Plex, or whatever type of media streaming that you are using, because there's several different ones out there. Virtual machines, from NVRs for security cameras to AI detection. Sometimes you can just do it all with one box. Now, sometimes it's better to break it up into multiple boxes, but we'll get to that at a later point. So then a lot of people ask, well, what is the best? Well, there, subjectively, it's there really isn't a best. The best is gonna be different for everybody. The best is gonna be the one that best fits your needs. So if anybody out there is telling you, hey, this is the best of something, probably don't want to take a look at that list because simply one size just doesn't fit all. For instance, you could just want a small little form factor PC, a couple hard drives, do your thing, you're good to go. Next guy is going to want a big massive server, whether it be like 12 to 40 hard drives and 48 cores and 300 megs of memory and well i guess that would be 300 gigs but anyway we're going to start off by building a small little server and it's actually one that i ran for a couple years but eventually i did outgrow it due to when it needed various size of hard drives and just didn't fit me anymore. And I'm actually gonna still use it as a backup of the backup server. So you can really use whatever that you want. And we're using, this is a older little Xeon Dell to the T20 model and they do have, I think four hard drive slots in it and you can put um, four memory sticks in it, various cards. It's a desktop style, it is a Xeon processor. I think I've got around 24 gigs of RAM in it. And I ran on it for several years, the Unraid operating system. And well, you're wondering what is Unraid? And do I need to learn all of these geeky command line Linux stuff to do all these different services? Absolutely no. We're gonna show you how to do it real simple with a couple little gooey things to get things going and a USB stick. And it's mostly, for the most part, gonna be GUI driven to get everything installed all your hard drives, all your services such as Home Assistant, MQTT, Node-RED, Zigbee, the whole nine yards. I'm going to show you how to do it all. It's going to be real simple. So yeah, we are going to split this up into a multiple series because simply the videos would be too long because we are going to go in depth like we always do. And yeah, if you know some of this stuff, the markers are all down at the bottom. You can even put it in fast forward 2x like you should probably do because sometimes I talk too much and too slow. But whatever you want to do, it's your thing. So there are other options as well. If you want to go with some type of, say, small form factor such as this, but keep in mind you would be limited on the size and number of hard drives you could put in this particular box. And you may be asking, well, what a, why do I need all these different hard drives? Well, in Unraid, the basis of that is you're gonna have multiple hard drives. Typically, you'll wanna have at least two and you'll wanna have a solid state 
drive that'll hold all of your Docker container information. In the solid state, just think of it's more as gonna be a very fast drive that way Everything else just works quickly, such as your virtual machines, if you decide to do anything like Linux or Windows or whatever. And yeah, I know you probably think, oh, it's a lot of information at one time. We're gonna get to that at one point. So I like to run it basis on a minimum is three hard drives in the solid state. So that'd be four devices there. And the way you do things with the hard drives in Unraid is it's gonna build kind of a RAID array and a, it's gonna split your data across multiple hard drives. So when your three hard drives, like I typically like to set up, is one of the advantages of Unraid, and that's why they call it Unraid, because it's not a full legitimate RAID array like you would see like in an enterprise environment. Now, one of the advantages of it being Unraid is for instance, I've got several different size hard drives here from some of more Western digital. There's a Seagate. This one is a two terabyte. We have a six terabyte and even a 1.5 terabyte. Now, the way Unraid will want to do things is I have a six terabyte here. So we'll put the six terabyte on the left and we'll have the two in the middle and this one is the 1.5. So what's gonna happen when you add this to Unraid is these two drives will actually become basically one pool or basically like one drive to store all your data. And that would be things like say your photos, videos, et cetera, that you wanna store locally without having to rely on someone else's cloud. Well, what about this drive over here? Now what this is, is think it's the parity, kind of like your replication. So it's not an exact copy of the data that is here. But the way it works is, say for instance, this drive dies. So it just totally will not work anymore. And what would happen is Unraid would send you a type of notification that you set up, say through Discord or email, text, whatever it might be. So what would happen is Unraid would create a type of virtual drive and it would emulate at a slower speed the data that was on that drive using these two drives. So pretty cool. It's kind of, you won't lose your data, kind of like just a hot spare of things. It's not truly a backup. So don't get that you still wanna back up your data because yes, yeah, sometimes things can happen. But then basically what you would do is you would take another hard drive and you would install it in the system and tell Unraid, hey, this is now my new drive. And it would go ahead and replicate the data and fix things. That way you would have a healthy array and you wouldn't have any type of failures and speed would be back to way it was supposed to be because potentially if you did lose another drive and it was larger than the parity so you cannot have and i like to call it you can't make a bigger hole in your data than you have in parity so if you lost seven terabytes of data but you only had six terabytes of parity well then things just aren't going to work because that hole of data is now bigger than the parity itself. And you can actually do two drives of parity because if you do wanna create more parity because that could potentially happen as you're rebuilding things for that drive that failed, it does stress out the other drives and well, if they're around the same age and wear and everything, you potentially could have another drive failure at the same time while you're trying to rebuild. And that's why I say you should always have a secondary backup of your data. Now, I know that might be a lot of data, but that's just the way things are. If the data is priceless to you and you just can't replace it, definitely have a backup of it. And a good thing is to have a backup offsite. So enough about the drives and everything. It's real simple. It takes care of everything and the really cool part is you can start small, and that's exactly what I did. I started with 
three hard drives. Now you do want, like again, you do want to have a solid state cache drive that stores everything. So that's typically going to be like a solid state 3.5 inch hard drive that's in the system itself. Or you can do like an M.2 if your motherboard does support it. The M.2s are pretty cool because you just plug them in like a little cartridge and screw it down and boom, it pops up as a hard drive technically. So if you start off with say a small machine, say such as a small server like this, and it could be even a small desktop. That's the beauty of everything. You don't have to have like a server or whatever type of equipment. I actually started with this smaller machine. It, you can start with saving an older desktop and a lot of older desktops have different ports for multiple hard drives. You can just add in cards. It's really flexible in what you can do and get one that fits your needs based on a couple little factors here, such as hey, do I want to do any type of GPU encoding? I'm going to be running MB or Plex or whatever type of media streaming. So maybe an Intel based processor might be better for you because you want to do GPU encoding. But no matter what one you start out with, I started out, like I say, with an Intel base and then I went to a Ryzen 5 3600 just because it was a great price and the motherboard had plenty of SATA ports on it. I even had the M.2 so I could do whatever type of SSDs and then even had the M.2 slot where I wanted to add in the Coral TPU for Frigate. And we'll get to that at another point. Just, yeah, I know we're probably throwing out a lot of information. It's like drinking from a fire hose sometimes. So the really cool part is, and you really got to throw away a lot of things you may have learned in the past. And it's, hey, it's really difficult if I want to change entire machine out. I got to reload everything on it, put all my stuff back on it. No, it's this simple. The way Unraid is, the operating system goes on a USB flash drive. And I like to use some of these little Samsung bars. They're pretty reliable, pretty quick, and I haven't had any issues with them. And well, they honestly, they just look cool. They do have a silver version. This is more like a gunmetal type version or champagne, I guess, because they're trying to be politically correct on the names of them these days. And well, I'm not. But so there's the USB and that's where the operating itself it sits on for Unraid. So all your data sits on your hard drives and your SSD. Well, all you do, swap the box, jump entire platforms, changing from like Intel to AMD, usually that's pretty unheard of in operating systems, especially yeah, Windows. You just take the drives out, pop it in a new machine, turn it on, boot it up. Unraid will detect the hard drives based off the serial numbers and say, oh, all the hard drives are there and fire right up and you're good to go pretty much for the most part, unless you had some weird settings that you did say for network cards or something. But for the most part, it's just going to fire right up and you don't need to reinstall anything. So the upgradability of Unraid is just pretty just awesome. And yeah, what if you need more space, right? Well, say you want, this is that two terabyte. I'm going to switch this to a four terabyte. You pull this hard drive out, pop in a four terabyte, Tell it to rebuild, boom, there you go. You just upgraded the array. It's that simple. Now, if you ever go bigger than the parity, say this is the six terabyte, you can't pop in a 10 terabyte as a data. What you'll have to do is you'll now have to change the 10 terabyte to your parity, and then you would cycle in that six as a data drive. Your parity drive always has to be the same size or bigger. And you can mix and match brands, the sizes, etc. And I do highly recommend that you do buy different places. So when I'm buying hard drives, I don't try to buy, like if I want to buy like three 10 terabyte drives, I'm not going to buy all three from the same exact vendor because potentially you could get the same manufacturing run and what if there was an issue and 
I kind of like to scatter the hard drives out and where I buy them, even if they're the same exact model and the same exact sizes. And yes, Unraid is a paid operating system, so you do have to buy a license. And currently, no, at this time, there is, it's not a subscription-based. You buy it one time, and it's based on the number of hard drives on the size of license you want. And it's relatively inexpensive, especially for what you get. The Docker GUI that you get for managing all your Docker containers is just second to none. I'll just, I will get into some of that. So I know there are a bunch of other free software from FreeNAS and everything else. Definitely go ahead and try them all. That's what I did. When I first started, I tried three or four different ones and including Unraid. And I just kept going back to Unraid just because of some of the features and things I liked in the Unraid subsystem itself. Now it does run Linux on the back end and you can jump into the command line and do your thing and get your geek on. So don't think you can't do that there and it's like some lockdown system. I, I don't like that and you know that and well, I just wouldn't run this if it was locked down like that. So what about the drawbacks of this different type of raid, right? It's not a true raid. Well, one of the drawbacks is the speed of you're not going to have that same speed that you would get from a true, like say ZFS raid, where <clears throat> it actually takes and stripes the data across multiple drives. That way it can write to multiple drives at one time and it's reading from multiple and you get that additional performance. This is going to be a little bit slower for writing things. Now, one thing that really helps out is Remember I talked about doing that cache drive for your Docker containers and the data? Well, potentially what you'll do is you're not usually dropping a bunch of data on the array at one time on a day-to-day -day basis. So the way things Unraid works is it'll drop the data on the SSD and the SSD is fast. It's gonna be probably quicker than your network interface. So the data will live there and then the time you schedule the mover at say 2 a.m., 3 a.m., the default, it will automatically move that data from the SSD over to the array all while you're not waiting on it. So pretty cool stuff there and that way tomorrow your cache is empty and ready to go for the next batch of data you're going to drop. So don't think that you can, can't do anything like this and that, hey, that's too much for me. I've never done that. And well, jump on in and let's take a look and let's get started. Mm. Boom, you did it. Nervous. You can go ahead and go. Okay. See you later, Owen. 